everybody, this is Cassie Gould and welcome to CUNA's Car Convos. This is our first time car buyer series and today we're handling all three sales with Mike T driving the sick Dodge Durango. Mm -hmm. Thanks for letting me pick your brain oh, about pleasure. all this. So why don't you uh, kind of introduce yourself. I know you're a sales manager, but kind of what led you to that position? My name is uh, Mike T. I'm the general manager at the Cunis Oregon Chrysler store. Uh, I started off in sales when I was about 18 years old and just worked my way up and loved it, you know? And then uh, about 2013, I got into the Cunis group and just realized I had found my spot and I'd found my home and that is uh, what I've been doing ever since. I just, it's a great group of people to work for. It's a great, great company, great employee. So um, that's about it. So you said you've been working since you were 18 and I know we kind of discussed it, but if you had to do like a ballpark, how many, how many cars do you think you've sold over here? Oh gosh. I don't know. It's been 18 years. Uh, I, I, I don't even know if I have a guess. Uh, <laughs> Thousands, probably. Thousands? Yeah, between sales and and management, yeah, a, a lot. lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why don't you walk us through the sales process from the time that I get to a dealership looking to buy a car to the time that I get to the finance room? So uh, it starts off pretty simple. You know, usually you're walking around on the lot, and a sales consultant will come up and greet you and say hello and start you know asking some questions and then um, if, if you're looking to expedite that process the best way to do that is to go inside give the dealership a little bit of information you know such as what kind of vehicle you're looking for what kind of budget you're looking to be in um, an idea of what your credits like usually helps there um, and then you know, so we'll sit down, we'll, you know, the consultant will come talk to the manager and kind of relay that information to me. And if it's a good manager, they'll come out and say hello to you yeah. and, you know, kind of reiterate some of the conversation. And so you spend about 15, 20 minutes doing that. And then, you know, depending on how many cars it is that you decide to look at or test drive, you know, uh, I just recommend test driving too right mm -hmm. uh, at least just to kind of get an idea make sure what you're picking is perfect for you yeah. have you ever had someone test drive like a bunch of cars like 10 or 15 oh yeah oh yeah uh, you know sometimes that's part of it right sometimes you have to you have to really decide what it is that you like about something or that you don't like about it and that's what we're here for right yeah. that's that's why we all have jobs is because <laughs> all right we're supposed to help you figure out exactly what that is yeah right and then that's going to dictate too. sometimes maybe you'll decide that you can spend a little more because you want a nicer car with nicer features and or maybe you'll find something that's a little less expensive that you're like this fits all the needs mm -hmm. what's like the coolest car you sold oh there's been some cool ones we sold a 69 trans am out of oregon not long ago that was that was probably pretty cool that mm -hmm. was that was up there okay so I'm coming to Oregon Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and do I need to like bring anything with me? Obviously I should probably bring my ID if I'm yeah, going to yeah. test drive in. Driver's license insurance is the absolute must, right? Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, I always recommend for first time buyers especially that you know you bring um, a paycheck stub with you, your most recent paycheck stub because that's mm -hmm. going to help you through the process and validate some of the things that the bank will be looking for when we do get your loan facilitated for you. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I would recommend a utility bill too if you think that you, you don't have a lot of credit or maybe have a couple bumps and bruises, you know, things that prove where you live, that's, mm -hmm. that's not a bad thing to do either. But yeah, mainly driver's license insurance, pay stub. Do you recommend like people bring, especially first time buyers, do you recommend that they bring um, like a parent or someone that's been through this process? I definitely don't think that hurts. Um, mm -hmm. You know, somebody neutral that you trust is, is never a bad thing. 
uh, if you've done your research and you really have a good genuine idea of what it is that you're trying to accomplish do you need that no you don't need it but mm -hmm. I, I don't I definitely don't think it hurts I mean I would go with my child on their yeah. first purchase yeah. right yeah so you, you said you've sold thousands of cars are there any like common mistakes you see first-time buyers commit or do I mean, the, the only real common mistake I would say is to deal with somebody that's, you know, you don't trust, mm -hmm. right? I think, you know, or I just want this car so bad, but I, I don't think I like the dealer. I don't think I like the dealership, but I just want this car. Maybe, maybe that, but it, it's, it's hard for them to really make a mistake because there's not a lot of um, experience there to mm -hmm. determine what would be a mistake, I guess. Yeah. So going over the price of the car because i know used car market and everything mm -hmm. has been crazy lately yeah what what kind of like affects the price of a car like i know miles is a big one and the miles is a big one condition condition be another if you're talking about trade-in or if you're talking about buying i'm not sure but you know mm -hmm. if you're talking about your trade-in yeah you know and, and it, you know i always recommend to get the most money for your trade you bring the car in in its best shape possible, right? Mm -hmm. You know, clean it up and make sure your tires are good and the maintenance has been done on it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as on a, a car on the lot, you know, at Cunis, we, we safety all of our vehicles, no matter what state we're in, and make sure that they're standing tall. So it's hard for you to find something on those vehicles that isn't going to be perfect mm -hmm. so you know black friday they always says is a good time to buy electronics president's day is a great time to buy furniture is there like a keen point in the year where maybe you'll get a better deal on a car or the best time to buy a car well uh, myself personally i feel like any day is a good day to buy a car mm -hmm. um I think notoriously people will tell you the end of the year or end of the month because dealers are most um, aggressive at that point trying to finish the month or year strong. Mm -hmm. But any dealer that I know is really looking to sell a car at any day. So um, if you're able to buy a car, any time is a good time, I think. If we're test driving a car like this, is there anything that you should do during the test drive? I know I've kind of talked with my mom. She's like, always take it out to a country road, yep. see how it rides. Is there anything else? Is there anything when you're physically looking at the car that you should look for? Like any areas that are prone to rust or anything like that? No, I would always say, make sure you look at the tires. I think that's an important thing. And when you talk about maintenance, that's, that's one of your more expensive mm -hmm. maintenance items is, is replacing the tires. And on top of that, for safety reasons, you want to yeah. have good tires on the car, especially here in the Midwest during those winter months, you know? Yeah, my uh, my tires are up on my car, so... Yeah, it's time to get some new ones. Yeah, time to get some new ones. I should probably do it sooner rather than later. Well, I know a guy that can help you. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, from your mind of a salesperson, I don't... Because, you know, usually... I've seen... I've gone through the car shopping process 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 with my parents granted i haven't been paying attention because i was like 14 15 i'm like that's miles away from me but is there anything like will the salesperson think i'm dumb if i like forget to use a turn signal or something like no no <laughs> actually i've been at some scary test drives in my career so i will tell you uh firsthand that no use not not using a not using a turn signal or something is not the worst thing I've ever seen. Blowing stop signs or uh, getting in an accident, that's something you probably don't necessarily want to do. <laughs> you okay. Know? You know, you say any time is a good time to buy a car. If maybe the price is not where you're looking at, how, how much room do you usually give for a negotiation on price? And what do what can be better for negotiation, like a higher credit score or something like that? Um, a higher credit score can help you as far as interest rates goes. If you're trying to get a, you know, a lower payment, mm -hmm. I will tell you in today's market, it's it's there's not a ton of room for negotiation. Unfortunately, it's not it's not like the old days. You know, everybody's kind of putting their cars online for the best price because every you know every dealership wants 
wants people to be able to see what they have for sale. Mm -hmm. um, so it, that does unfortunately leave a little less room for negotiation on that side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I always think the best place to negotiate is on the on your trade in. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that if you really have a nice car and you think it's worth more money, that's that's probably the direction that if I'm the buyer, I'm going mm -hmm. more than the price because chances are I saw that car online mm -hmm. and the price is what brought me in there yeah. in the first place, right? Yeah. So so you know you talk about trade-in you know there's there's all sorts of online tools whether that's you know kelly blue books carfax all of that um when you're valuing your trade-in and maybe even one on the lot is there like one that you prefer over the other or my honest answer to that is all of them are good mm -hmm. guides right mm -hmm. um I think the common mistake is everybody wants the most money for their trade-in, which I, you know, I do as well as, yeah. a, as a consumer, so I, I fully understand that. The problem is when you read the actual descriptions on what makes a car in excellent condition or whatever, whatever the book says in that particular mm -hmm. source, um, very few cars are that until they go through the shop and are reconditioned and 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 brought back to that level so I, do i think i have a favorite no i think they're all pretty good guides and to give you a good idea um on on what to use there mm -hmm. i think the best way to get the best value for your trade is to bring it in and have somebody professionally appraise it somebody that does it every single day mm -hmm. and let them give you an idea on what they think it's worth and then you can kind of put yourself where you want to be that way so you know, first time car buyer, you can be a first time car buyer at any age. It could be sure. 16 or 30. Mm -hmm. So if let's say I have the privilege or any first time buyer has the privilege of having a co-signer, whether that's a parent, spouse or whatever, how does that kind of impact the buying process in the fun? And I'm, I know finance is going to yep. be the next episode, but how does that kind of so uh, a, a cosigner can definitely, definitely increase your chances of getting, uh, um, especially for a first time buyer, if, if you're limited credit, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're, you're basically looking for that person to help you jumpstart your credit profile, you know, so mm -hmm. um, somebody with established credit that uh, has on time payments, mm -hmm. that's an ideal cosigner for you, you know, so you're looking for that to get you that lower rate to be able to purchase more vehicle essentially if you want the leather and loaded and all the all the goodies yeah. but you want it in an affordable payment you're a first time buyer i definitely think a co-signer um will help you achieve that goal yeah. so for a first time car buyer what do you kind of like recommend whether that's new versus used or suv sedan truck I think that um, I think that is a little bit different for everybody, honestly. Um, you know, manufacturers often have um, first-time buyer programs, and, and some of the lenders. It all it, it all kind of goes back into what your situation is. It kind of all goes back into what we were talking about originally when we initially sit down and start talking about the needs versus the wants and. Mm -hmm. and what your budget is and what type of vehicle it is that you're looking for and 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 what you need that vehicle to do for you are you you know are you using it to haul stuff are you mm -hmm. using it just as a commuter you're looking for fuel mileage um I, I think there's plenty of variables that go into that which is why it's nice to sit down with a professional and kind of yeah. hammer out what you really need versus what you want and how we can kind of mix all that together for you mm -hmm. What was your first car when you... Oh, my first car was a 1990 Dodge Dynasty. Mine was a 2003 Toyota Camry. Oh, that's a nice car. It is. It's it's what my sister still drives to this day. It's uh, got a little bump and bruises on it. Because, yep. you know, it's, when my mom bought it, she bought it as a kid car. Uh, yeah, it's got some bump. It's still got a cassette player. Oh, there you go. Um, when my when my sister took it over, I had to explain to her what a cassette player was. So that was uh, super fun. Um, and 
And then yeah, so now I'm driving a 2014 Toyota Camry. So oh, there you go. Yeah. Another nice car. It is. Uh, no cassette player this time though, unfortunately. Oh, that's too bad. But I did upgrade to Bluetooth, so that's There you nice. go. I need to have Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah. That's you know? that's one of my needs. At the very least, like have Bluetooth because I I don't listen to the radio. Yeah. I I listen to I have Spotify Premium. I've had Spotify Premium mm -hmm. for like six years. I like to listen to my Taylor Swift. My oh, there you go. My, my country. Yes, my, <laughs> my my country in the summer. Windows rolled down. You gotta have that. Yeah. yeah. I would like Apple CarPlay though. That's, but that's nice. That's like a want. That's not necessarily a need. Yeah, I, I like I like Apple CarPlay or Android CarPlay as mm -hmm. well. All right, well, thank you. Thank you for letting me pick your brain. And my pleasure. Hopefully, this will help in my car buying experience. Yeah, well, if you have any other questions, just let me know. All right, thank you. Yeah.